Hi guys, it's Autumn, and it's been... Checks notes. 10 months since the last time I did anything YouTube related. I believe the last time I gave an update was a little closer to a year ago. And in a year, things have gone different. We had talked about possibly staying in the last place we were living for another year in the digital art showcase video that I did. That didn't happen. We ended up moving closer to our family, so we now live about an hour away from our family uh, because we ended up with some neighbors that were real sketchy and we did not want to stay there because they constantly yelled at us and told us off for nothingness. So now we live in an apartment owned by my great aunt, who is the coolest landlord of all time and does not mind that we have five guinea pigs and two cats and run around like chickens with our heads cut off. So I'm going to talk about what's happening in the video because I know the D&D story times are relatively popular. Probably one of the more popular things that I do on my channel, except for sketchbook tours. But sketchbook tours being popular doesn't surprise me at all because I get recommended them all the time. So what you're seeing me do now is a height chart for characters for my newest campaign. So this campaign is called uh, The Land of Ysaldre. It is a custom world that I have been building for the last six months for my friends to play in. And when I tell you that I have been working hard on this, I am doing character art for all of them, which is what I am sharing with you. This height chart. I also, halfway through this height chart, decided that I wanted to do the color mock-ups before I finished drawing all the characters, because I'm crazy. But I did it. There are six player characters in this campaign, five of which are currently playing at time of recording this video. One of which has not given me their character backstory yet. So, for now, there are five player characters that I'm working with. The one currently on screen that is slowly zooming away from you is Ezra. Next to Ezra is Caius, and I will discuss all of them because you get to see all of them in height order for their finished speed arts, because I spent so much time on these. But I, I loved all of them. They all came out really good, and I made little stands with their names and their pronouns on them for the game, and it's great. So, as to where I've been working. Uh, as soon as we moved into our new place, we moved in December, there were holidays. So Christmas time was hectic. We were everywhere. We were barely home. We were trying to get our lives together <laughs> and get our crap together. It didn't really go well for a while. After the holidays was January. We were trying to get to a sense of normalcy and figuring out what we were doing and I was applying to jobs like nobody's business. I applied to more jobs and heard back from less than I think is reasonable. Um, so we did that. Finally, in February, landed a job. Did the interview process, got all my paperwork in. Couldn't start until the second week of March. Awesome. So I spent most of February just trying to enjoy what little free time I'd have left before I started working. I start working. I really liked my job that I had in March, uh, up until like two weeks ago. Um, except for the fact that the pay rate was garbage. I did not get paid enough and I had to drive between multiple different schools on a single day because they didn't have enough, enough staff coverage. And that drives me crazy. So now, here we are in August. They finished their summer program, I left, started a new job. That job does not start until the first week of September, which is fair. So now I've got all this time in between and I am being proactive and I am making content. So self promo time. If you want to check out any of the other things that I make, my Instagram is a thing. I believe it's in the description. If it's not, I'll put it there. Uh, my Patreon, I have really low tiers. So if you want to support me, so that way, I can feed my two cats and my five guinea pigs and still create art for you. It'd be appreciated. I have a tier where you get sent a print every month. It's not very expensive. 
I'm not great at sending out the prints on time all the time, but they do get sent out. I also have a Twitch. Don't really use it. Don't really have the time. But it is there for the off chance that I do use it. So, uh, I also closed my Etsy in this time being because Etsy's rates for taxing and stuff, ridiculous. The character that's on screen right now, because I'm going to actually talk about D&D now. This is Von Oric. He is played by my friend uh, Condor. His name's actually Connor. We call him Condor because there's too many Connors in our friend group, so they all have nicknames. He is a draconic sorcerer, so he's human, but draconic bloodline, so he has the dragon scales and stuff. And I've never drawn a draconic sorcerer before, so this was a first. But he is the tallest of the group. He is 6'3". And this man also likes to disguise himself as a red dragonborn that doesn't look anything like a red dragonborn. And his entire backstory is just so good. But it's not my place to share it because I do know some of my friends watch this. So I'm not spilling any juicy details. I will be talking about classes and I will be talking about very generic things about their characters. Um, I also gave each character a specific background and you'll see the names and uh, pronouns flash at the end because I did all of it in one place. This next character has not officially joined the campaign yet, but should be. Uh, this is Azrael. This character is played by my friend Athena. Uh, she has been busy, so she hasn't been able to get me the character stuff yet, but eventually. He, and I hate to say this, but I've told her this, he looks like Cowboy Ganondorf. And while I'm here for it, it really killed me while I was drawing him to look at him and go, ah yes, yeehaw Ganondorf. Because there's no reason that should be the thought in my head while I'm drawing. But I don't mind. So he is a hornless tiefling, and I have no idea what class he's going to be yet. I just know he's a tiefling. And I will update him as we go forward with probably more D&D story times in the future, because I really like doing them. Uh, while I have a minute, because this one took me forever to render, uh, I will also be doing a studio tour, as promised, 10, 11 months ago, in the new studio that I'm in because it's actually mine. It's all mine. Everything the light touches is my kingdom. Um, and there's just a lot of stuff in here and it's been created to be the most comfortable studio space ever. I don't think I'll do a house tour because I don't wanna accidentally give away where I live for people that don't know where I live because I do know family and friends watch this stuff. Um, but beyond that, I have been painting, I have been creating, this is one thing that I've been working on, I've been working on painting series just to get back into it. Um, it's taken me a while to get back into painting because of time reasons. It's eight months into 2022 and I've finished two watercolor paintings and that's going to change eventually. So the next character we have here is Equinox. Equinox is the... Um, I guess code name is the best way to put it. Equinox is the code name for this character. Uh, although most of the people in the campaign already know, Equinox is a combination of the souls of Miloui Tupesh and William Cartwright. They were smushed together by a god known as Geminus. And um, now welcome to Moon Knight, but Tiefling, sort of. But actually separate souls as opposed to DID. Uh, we, we are playing it sort of as if it is DID with a very cautious label on it as that. Uh, just to make it... Because from my understanding and my limited research, because I am not a psychologist, into DID, there is a time period of disassociation between uh, alters taking like the front line front line the fronting position so we have implemented that between the two altars that are there um oh. altars with quotations because technically they are just two souls smushed into a body by a god so um, there is a period of disassociation that has like disadvantage effects and things like that but it, it's played very well and very interestingly um so since he's 
two souls smushed together into one thing. He is a multicolored tiefling with two, two different horns, two different eye colors, um, and two different skin tones that kind of merge in the middle. A lot of the design was actually designed by my friend Chris himself. He did a really good job giving me like, hey, this is what they look like exactly. And it made it really easy for me to go in and create this image of Equinox. Although the working title for this character was Tempest for a while, which I still miss and love. Um, mm, Equinox is a warlock, two different warlock subclasses for each soul, which is fun and complicated, but fun. This next character is Neo Grizzly Draft. He is a rogue. He is played by my friend Frank. That's all I've got for him right now. Green is kind of his color scheme. But that's, that's it for now. We've played one session of this, and within said session, they were kidnapped, told that they could either join a pirate crew or die, joined a pirate crew, planned, to, planned a mutiny, executed said mutiny, and made one of the other characters the captain. Which went relatively well. There was no combat. And that was very interesting, because I could have sworn that they were going to end up in combat. But they did it. They stole a boat. They now have a boat named the Caspian that is theirs. Along the lines of the boat, my wife is making us a boat for the characters to actually go on. Out of cardboard, popsicle sticks, and epoxy. And it looks really good. And I'm very excited to see this boat finished. Because then we're going to put that boat on the table. And we're going to put ca our characters on it. And we're going to sail around the sea. Um, I have maps and stuff of the world. A lot of the specifics of the campaign stuff I'm going to keep over on my Patreon. So if you're interested in following along more closely with the campaign, that would be the place to do so. Um, my friends are not allowed or at least currently not allowed or not on my Patreon, so they cannot see all of the secret stuff. But I will have maps, I will have uh, story stuff, character sheets, things like that of interest as I go. Uh, the print for the next few months are going to be these characters. So from, I believe it's from July? I'm checking my notes here. Yeah, from July until November, these characters are going to be prints on my Patreon. They will be the Patreon exclusive print for the month. And along with that, there will be information about each character. The next character we're working on is Arfri. He is played by my friend Nate. He is a blood hunter with tragic backstory because all of them have that, except for Ezra. <laughs> um, so he is a blood hunter, half elven, and he is interesting in the sense that he is he is a trauma boy. So when pushed over his breaking point, he becomes really crazy and doesn't remember it. I don't know what you would call that, so we're just calling him trauma boy, but. He focuses a lot of his powers on lightning and electrical things, so that's why there's a lot of bright blues and like the electric lightning bolts on the cuffs. This crazy alter ego hasn't really come out yet though in the campaign. We've been very careful because we created a like stress level indicator sort of for the character so we can keep an eye on how soon we can expect chaos mode to come out. So I'm sure some of you are more interested in like the living situation stuff. So we no longer have a third roommate. He went back to living where he was previously and he took his cat. So now we just have our two cats, Jester and Gus, the babies. Uh, and we have our five guinea pigs, so Tucker, Pumpkin, Clove, Midna, 
and tiny. I think that's all of them. I think I did it. After recording that last clip, Gus decided he wanted to escape, and my entire computer tower came crashing over. We are all good. I caught it. Uh, but yeah, so we have all of our pets now in they're in good health and happy. Uh, we are still living in a three bedroom home, though the master bedroom is giant and the two other bedrooms are of a smaller size. My studio is the bigger second bedroom and my wife's office is the third smallest bedroom. We still have a dining room, we have one bathroom now, and we have a very large kitchen with a walk-in pantry, which is cool. And yeah, that's all there really is to know about that. I think the worst part about it is street parking though. Whew. So this next character that is up here for you guys is Chaos. Chaos is my friend Colt's character, and they are a non-binary Azimar paladin. Azimar. Asimar. Asimar? I don't know anymore. Asimar paladin, and they are mute. They're really cool, and I love them. And their character design just makes me very happy. Uh, the worst part of this character design was the chainmail, because I can't draw chainmail by hand. So I instead found a brush, hated all the brushes I found for Procreate, and then went to Clip Studio on my computer, brought this file into Clip Studio, put the chainmail, it fudged all the colors wrong, so then I just took the chainmail, put it back into Procreate, and had to adjust all the color settings, which takes two seconds in the sped up Procreate video file, but took forever in reality to make happen. Also, all of these characters have really crazy looking lighting on them. The idea was just to kind of accentuate all the features of the characters as much as I could. And for our last character of this video, we have Ezra Teach. This is my wife Kelsey's character. She is an elven monk, and she is the daughter of Steed Bonnet and Edward Teach, so Blackbeard and the Gentleman Pirate, because we watched our flag means death, and we decided they needed a daughter. Well, my wife did, and I said, sure, let's make that a Dungeons & Dragons character. So that's what she is. She's really fun. She's elven, she's adopted, obviously, and she grew up aboard the Revenge with her dads, and we sort of altered the show to fit our nefarious purposes, also known as giving them a child and making them married for reals. So there's that. But she is really fun, and she became the captain of the Caspian. So she is the big character that I'm keeping an eye on for this campaign just because I'm excited about her backstory. But really, all these characters have such intricate, fun backstories to pull from. I can't wait to see them in the rest of the campaign and be able to share more of the campaign with you guys as it comes to it. Gus is screaming. He's unhappy I closed the door on him, but he made himself do this, so... I would like to say, though, that from the three years ago when I first started doing D&D till now, my art has improved, thankfully. And my ability to do storytelling, I feel like, has improved. So I am looking forward to being able to share the first session sort of in depth at some point, or just like a couple of sessions. We have another one coming up, not this weekend. I think it's next weekend. We have another session coming up. So I'm going to do my best to take really good session notes. So that way I can share it with you guys. I am very excited to see what you guys think of this campaign. I'm excited to be back. Hopefully for more time than just like five videos, six videos, because I think that's what happened last time is I did a few and then stopped. I may be spacing them a little differently from now on, just so I have time to make them in between work. My new job is a little more high pressure and different hours, so I'll be working on it. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and welcome to the land of Ysaldry. I'll see you in the future.